Hello friends, in our General Organic Chemistry GOC Lecture 2, today we are going to learn about some topics, right? So, the first topic will be homolytic fusion, vitrolytic fusions, carbocations, free radicals, and carboanions. So, first we will start how the fusion occurs, what is the meaning of fusion, and what are the types of fusion, right? So, today we are going to learn about this basic topics in the organic chemistry. If your base is very clear, then only you can be master of the subject. So, let's start. First, we will see what is bond fusion. What is the meaning of bond fusion? The simple meaning is, meaning of fusion we can take as breaking. We can take as breaking, right? So something, if get broke, broken, then it, known, it can be also known as fusion in terms of bones. So the general meaning of bone fusion is nothing but breaking of bonds. Breaking of bonds. Normally, in organic chemistry, whatever we bonds we found in the molecule, that is covalent bond. That is covalent bond. And normally we are writing, suppose two carbon possess a covalent bond. So we are writing as a dash. We are writing as a dash, right? So covalent bond normally denoted by some dash, right? So now if the bone break, if the bone get broken or it will break, right? So, reaction may occur. Reaction may occur. Organic reaction is what? Organic reaction is a process of breaking and making of bonds. Means some bonds are going to break and some new bonds are going to form. So, breaking means bone fusion. So, bone fusion is very, very important in the organic chemistry, right? Organic chemistry, organic reactions are nothing but a process of bone breaking of starting materials and formation of new bond in the product, right? A reaction is considered successful. A reaction is considered successful if the bonds are formed in the product are stronger, are stronger than the bonds broken in the reactant, than the bond broken in the reactants, right? So that will be successful reaction, more stronger bond if formed in product in comparison with the starting material being known as successful chemical reaction, right? Next, what are the types of bond fusion? A question may arise, how much total type of fusions will take place in the organic chemistry covalent bonds? The simple answer is, there are two types of fusions of bond. There are two types of fusions of bond occurs in the organic chemistry. First, homolytic fusion. First, homolytic fusion. It is also known as homolysis. It is also known as homolysis. Second, heterolytic fusion. It is also known as heterolysis. See, there are two types of fusion in the bond, a covalent bond in organic chemistry. One we will call as homolytic fusion, another we will call as heterolytic fusion. So, two, two total types of bond fusion available with us. Now, if we see the meaning, if we see, if we see the details of both the fusion, then we will realize no any other possibility is there, right? So, total two types of fusions of bond, homolytic and heterolytic fusions. Now, we already know that a covalent bond is formed by sharing of electrons. Sharing of electrons. Say for example, suppose we have an atom A having one electron 
say for example we have a atom b having another electron right both have one one electron both have one one free electron now suppose this both are going to mix with each other by some chemical reaction that will form a covalent bond covalent means what sharing of electron in equal proportion and electrons will stay in middle area you can see a and b perform a covalent bond by sharing each electron by one element or you can say atom right so this is covalent bond where you can see the shared electrons are in middle position are in middle position right so covalent bond can be formed by this way next if the bond breaks in such a way if the bond breaks in such a way that each atom get one electron of the shared pair it is called homolytic fusion normal meaning is what suppose out of this covalent bond one electron of a is going to a another electron of b will going to be so both get equal both get equal proportion of the electron from breaking of the bond right so this type of fusions this type of fusions are known as are known as homolytic fusion both will get one one electron equal sharing equal donation right okay the single the single electron movement here which electron movement take place as i told single electron one will go with one and another will go with another is shown this type of this type of single electron movement is showed by half headed arrow you can see half headed arrow means here you can observe i drawn half arrow this is called full arrow this is called full arrow but if you remove half part that will be half arrow right so that's half headed arrow shows single electron movement single electron movement right half headed arrow shows single electron movement it shows one electron going to only one right okay next you can see if the bond covalent bond between a and b is broken then one electron will with a and another electron with b so this fusion is known as homolytic and they are both will separated with one one electron each one one electron each right so that is about the homolytic fusion now homolytic fusion results in the formation of neutral species that contains unpaired electron that contains an unpaired electron so as we seen in the last slide the electron one electron going with one so there is no charge there is no charge only one only one electron with one species another with another species so this species which one electron with no charge right these species are called free radicals in organic chemistry in organic chemistry some of the example of free radical we can take as chlorine free radical lithium free radical methyl free radical ethyl free radical etc etc so these are the example for free radicals these are the example for free radicals now free radicals are highly reactive in nature free radicals are highly reactive in nature and reaction that involves homolytic cleavage are called free radical reaction the reaction which follows the free radical homolytic cleavage is known as free radical reaction and homolytic fusion usually occurs in non polar in non polar bonds not into the polar bond but it will occurs into the non polar bonds conditions that generally favor homolytic fusion are 
first high temperature second ultraviolet light third presence of peroxide presence of peroxides right so these three condition favor the homolytic fusion and you can see if chlorine break in presence of ultraviolet light it get dissociated into free radical two free radical chlorine free radicals will be generated same way if you take the alkyl halide rx means alkyl halide if you provide heat or light it may get dissociated into the free radical that is r free radical that is x r means alkyl free radical here chlorine bromine whatever halogen we take and we will get the free radical accordingly right now we will talk about the alkyl free radical so free radicals of carbon such as methyl free radical are known as alkyl free radical not only the methyl it may be propyl it may be ethyl it may be butyl pentyl whatever whatever commonly it is known as alkyl free radicals and they can be primary also they can be secondary also and they can be tertiary also and if you think about the stability of alkyl free radical in increase in the order in increase in the order so the tertiary will be tertiary will be more more stable tertiary will be more stable than the secondary secondary will be more stable than the primary so same order you can write in these terms also these terms also so the free radical tertiary tertiary free radical is too much stable than the primary and secondary and the order of stability you can see it is already shown in our screen right now if you have a question what is tertiary what is secondary and primary that we are going to see right now see a carbon connected to other three carbons other three carbon and a free radical suppose formed here free radical formed here that is known as tertiary free radical tertiary alkyl free radical suppose you have a carbon suppose you have a carbon connected to two carbons connected to two carbons and one hydrogen that free radical will be known as secondary free radical and suppose you have a carbon which is connected to two hydrogen connected to two hydrogen but only one carbon that free radicals will be known as primary free radical primary free radical right so these are three types of free radical and highest stable is the tertiary then secondary then primary the main reason for this order is hyperconjugation right we are currently not going to discuss about the hyperconjugation i will prepare a separate video on hyperconjugations resonance effect inductive effects etc right so that we will learn in separate video but here the reason is in uh, or the reason for this order is hyperconjugation right next heterolytic fusion heterolytic fusion when a covalent bond breaks in such a way breaks in such a way that both the electron of shared pair that both the electrons of shared pair with one part and the other cleavage is termed as heterolytic fusion it means the bond is going to break in such a way where both the electron both the electron of covalent bond either will go into the one element say for example b and or it may go to the a it depends which is more electron negative which is more electro negative here we assume here we assume that b is more electro negative so both electron will transfer to the b and b will have negative charge due to gaining of electron due to gaining of electron but a lost electron so a may have some 
positive charge. A may have some positive charge, right? So a fusion will take place in such a way where both the electron of covalent bond transfer to one atom that will be known as heterolytic fusion. Now, heterolytic fusion results in the formation of charged species. Why the charged species? Because electron, both the electron transfer to one. So that will get negative charge, but other will get positive charge. So formation of charged species, formation of charged species will take place right? in heterolytic fusion, which is evident from the above example, which is evident from this above example. Since a pair of electron is moved, the arrow used are full headed. As you see, I drawn the arrow. I drawn the arrow before some second full arrow. Why? Because both the electrons shifted, so full headed, full headed arrows are used for the heterolytic fusion, right? You can see a full arrow is drawn. Electron negativity of bromine is high than the carbon. So it will take the electron from the covalent bond. Br will be negative. CH3 will be positive. Here, the CH3 plus methyl cation. It is known as methyl cation. The positive charge ions are cations. And negative charge ions are anions. Right? So here, methyl cation in the above reaction is carbocation. Carbocation. Next, carboanion. As we seen, one get electron will get negative charge. So if the carbon is more electron negative in comparison to the other element, then the carboanion will form. But if the carbon lost electron, then it will have positive charge. So if you say carbocation, it is positively charged. Carbon is known as carbocation, right? Carbocation are highly unstable. Carbocations are highly unstable and reactive species. They are reactive. Carbon possessing positive charge known as carbocation are highly unstable and reactive species. Carbocation can be primary also, it may be secondary also, it may be tertiary also. Depending how much many alkyl group attached to the positively charged carbon. As we seen earlier, the stability of the stability of carbocation follows the below order. Tertiary carbocation will be more stable than secondary than uh, the primary, right? So tertiary is more stable than secondary than primary. As we seen, the positive charge carbon connected to three carbon tertiary. Two carbon secondary and one carbon primary, right? And why this order? Due to I plus effect and hyperconjugation effect. I plus is inductive effect, hyperconjugation is a different effect. So both, both will generate some uh, order. The effects we will learn in separate video, but the correct order for stability of carbocation is this one, right? Next. Carboanion. The carbon, if get electron from the covalent bond, so it will have negative charge. And the negatively charged, the shared electron, if came to the carbon, is termed as carboanion. Is termed as carboanion. Right? So carbon, if get the electron, it may have negative charge. Both the electron, if shifted towards the carbon, may have negative charge. And that will be shown by a full arrow. That will be shown by a full headed arrow. Right? So, order of stability of carboanion is exact opposite for the carbocation. It means it is reverse. It is reverse due to the inductive effect. You can see the tertiary, tertiary will be less stable. Tertiary will be less stable than the secondary. While in cation, that is reverse, right? Here, the primary, here the, this is secondary, eh? this is secondary, this is primary. Here, the order is reverse due to the inductive effects, right? So, the order of stability in carboanion 
is higher stability CL3 than primary than secondary than tertiary. So this is all about the fission sub bond and formation of carbocation, anion and free radical. In some next videos, we will also learn about the inductive effect, resonance effect, hyperconjugation and the other detail points. And we can prepare a separate video for uh, carbocation, anion and free radicals also. So thank you very much for listening me patiently. We will meet in the next video. Keep learning and get subscribed in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for listening.